an Alabama Tape Production. Welcome everybody to Taking On Sports. I am TD. That is Greg. Greg, how you doing today, man? I am good. How are you today, sir? I'm pretty good, okay. man. Uh, how was your cigar? Fantastic. Good stuff. <laughs> Very sweet. Lovely. Always, always a good the one mm. cigar I have a year. Man, man, man. It's good. Uh, talking, of course, about Alabama's victory over Tennessee in the third Saturday of October. Uh, second half comeback once again for the Tide. Uh, kind of a yeah. theme this year. And just again, the, a team that looked kind of overwhelmed in the first half comes out and just dominates the second half. Um, uh, just talk about it, Greg. Uh, do you think uh, this is sustainable? Can they keep winning this way, or do they need to show up earlier? Uh, well, we're to this point. But, I mean, pro- I mean, obviously we've said it again and again. We'd love to see a complete game, and <laughs> we seem to be by far a second half second half team there it's almost like a tell the two halves every every uh most of these sec games this season you know against that high-powered lsu offense in two weeks i don't know if we could do that (laughs) for sure yeah they'll have to um they just need a hot start they need that first half of arkansas mixed with the second half teams um yeah we can get a first half of Arkansas with the second half of uh, what we saw yesterday. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that could be some serious. <laughs> there you go. And maybe that's, you know, a silver lining or, you know, something to look forward to as an Alabama fan is that this team probably hasn't played their best game of the year yet. They haven't played a complete right. game outside of Middle Tennessee. Um, yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's hopefully that's coming in two weeks now. They get a bye before LSU comes mm-hmm. to town. So, um, like you said, Jaden Daniels, you know, if LSU, you know, were better in the rankings, uh, Jaden Daniels would be a Heisman contender and he really shouldn't and he be. Might still, yeah. might still very well be. I mean, just with what he's done week in and week out, you know, hopefully we can kind of give him that performance that takes him out of that talk <laughs> in two weeks. Uh, that would be ideal. But, I mean, we've seen multiple loss Heisman winners before. It not it hasn't been as common recently, but I mean remember like you know, RG three had what, three or four losses when he won. Um I know uh, Tebow had That's a couple true. losses back in 07. <laughs> mm-hmm. and they weren't really uh um, No, it's but, it's absolutely true, yeah. Um but either way, uh, that'll be a good one. Like we said, that's two weeks. Um, right. It'd be really interesting to see the Alabama defense against yeah, sure. the LSU offense. Um, right. Uh, but, yeah, uh, anything else about uh, yesterday's game you want to talk about? You know, I was just, you know, just the, you know, just how bad it was in the first half, way I could. I couldn't. I was like, is this really? Some of that first half, it would just seem like everybody was sleepwalking, whether it was the offense, the defense, the, mm-hmm. the crowd. Like, every, everything seemed so out of sorts. And just to hit that comeback that we did is just kind of amazing because I was like, my goodness, are we going to look worse against the. You know, I thought it couldn't get any worse than what we saw last year. And I was like, my goodness. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just taking it to us. Like, well, what are we doing? You know, It looked uh, like a repeat. I mean, that, that first touchdown throw, that is – you have to give it to point. Milton and Squirrel White. Right? Yeah. That was just an amazing, perfect throw, perfect catch. Right. It wasn't bad coverage. It wasn't a busted assignment. It no, was a mismatch. You never want to see a linebacker on the other team's best receiver. Yeah, but I mean – Yeah. He gave as good a coverage as you could have hoped for in that mm-hmm. situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And Milton just placed it perfectly and scroll white made a Perfect. hell of a catch. Yeah. Um, and really, uh, Joe Joe Milton probably played his best game of the season, to be honest. For the most part, he's yeah. pretty consistent. I would think so, yeah. He played 
Uh, it was just lighting us up. It was perfect as what, like first eight, seven or eight passes. Um, yeah, they were killing us. And we woke yeah, up like there. It, and, the, and the other thing, you know, we weren't getting any pressure at all in the first half. I mean, he was doing what he wanted to do. And I was like, Hendon Hooker back? <laughs> like, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> <laughs> It, it looked rough on a couple of those early drives. It was, you know, good yeah. holds by the defense to holding the field goals on a couple of it really them. really did, yeah. But um, they were just doing what they wanted to, and nickel and diamond down the field. All right. Um, you know, hitting that. Yeah, I did say that to myself when Milton threw that pass. I just kind of in my head, I was like, oh. So, like, it's one of these games where a guy that's a quarterback that's struggling plays against Bama and plays his highlight right. real game, you know, the Steven right. Garcia game. Yeah, we've uh, seen that will. a couple of times over the years. So I'm like, my goodness. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, like you said, they made the adjustments. They got, they really got pressure the second half. Had the scoop and score. In fact, um, you know, we came out. That was, of course, huge. That the offense came out and scored in two plays. Oh, yeah, you know, now, McClellan with the, like the 30 yard run, and then the deep pass to Bond. Mm-hmm. That's huge when you're. Offense can do that. Yeah. Defense can force it. It was a three and out right after that, right? And then, out. Yeah. And, you know, Burton um, had another de- another decent game again mm-hmm. there. He's kind of turned into our, I guess, our go-to guy at certain points. And he's, mm-hmm. when he's on, you know, he's, he's putting a heck of a performance together there. Yeah, he could be a really big possession guy. Uh, he's not going to take the top off like Bond, maybe. Um, All right, right. Uh, and you do you want to see uh, maybe one more guy really step up too? Um, yeah, Malik Benson's getting a few catches um, these past couple weeks. Yeah, but um, he so has you know. not been the threat that I many thought. Probably was yeah, yeah. coming into the season. He was kind of going to be the guy. I think a lot of people thought that really thought hasn't we, turned into that. But. Yeah, I think people thought he might be the new Jameson, you know, the speed yeah. guy. But no, he's – but maybe, you know, something coming on. Um, but yeah, uh, great win for the Tide. Go yes, into the sir. bye week and mm-hmm. get ready for LSU. And they basically probably the SEC West title game, if you will. Oh, yeah. De facto title game, me all right there, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, um, but yeah, got our first revenge game out the way, and we'll see what happens in two weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and elsewhere, the, yesterday's other big, the not other big game, but the big game yesterday um, for the rest of the country: Ohio State, Penn State, and it was a dud. Ohio State just shut them down, and you know, they really did. It was only what a nine point eight point win in the, the scoreboard, but it was it never felt like Penn State had a close. shot. Yeah, um, I and mean, the Penn State defense did a pretty. I I thought did a heck of a job, um, but that offense just never got going at all. Mm, no, that's been kind of nothing. the thing. That was kind of the thing, you know. A lot of you know they've had some slow starts, and people wanted you know is that offense any good and. I don't know. I mean, obviously the Ohio State defense was a much bigger test because I mean, obviously Penn State really hadn't played anybody at all coming into that game, and they, you know they just still. I guess Penn State is still Penn State against the big guys in the East for now. <laughs> yep, James Franklin continues to just no show in big games. Um, uh, yeah, that's really- other stuff, but yeah. at home. Against Michigan, but yeah, that was a tough, tough, tough uh, loss for a team that you know, you know, that was my, that was my uh, kind of my uh, off pick there uh, as far as coming out. I mean, still had that opportunity, but yeah, but now you still think it's the same old, same old Ohio State, Michigan will kind of determine that whole conference. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and. It's a shame that they're not going division this this year because uh, on the other side, you know, Iowa goes down to Minnesota controversially yeah, a little bit. Yeah, um, a little bit. Gonna, yeah, that Big Ten championship game is going to be a joke or an ungodly huge upset. Um, 
Elsewhere, another game between ranked teams, uh, Utah, last second win over USC. USC wow. just cannot get over the Utes. Uh-huh. They bullied them. Again. Mm. <laughs> Wait, I mean, yeah. And he just, uh, once again, I mean, just another game where, it, I don't know the, the Utah defense, you know, for the most part made USC look, I mean, they had a decent game, but it wasn't anything amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, Caleb Williams looked okay. I mean, he wasn't the, he really hasn't been the guy the last two weeks that you the USC's needed to win. You know those those two games. No, not two losses. Probably out of the Pac-12. Like, um, definitely out of the playoff. I mean, you know, kind of like a disappointing year for what a lot country. of people thought coming in for what USC might be this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Bigger than the defense, crazy enough. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Yeah, it's just amazing how Utah has their number. They um, really do. You know, two wins last year, one close one like this, and one blowout in the title game. And now right. they uh, probably more than likely put it into USC's playoff hopes. Um, yeah. Not necessarily their Pac-12 hopes, but uh, yeah. no two lost Even. teams made the playoff yet in the four-team era. Um, elsewhere, across the country, the biggest upset of the day, Virginia, goes into Chapel Hill and beats 24-point favorite North Carolina. Uh, that, was that was a wild. shocker when I saw that, and I didn't watch any of that game, didn't get a chance to catch it, and then I saw that uh-huh. score on my phone, and I was, I was like, that's crazy. That's not one that I expected at all. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, a couple busy doing stuff last night. Kind of saw it, you know, Virginia, Virginia's hanging. I was like, wow. And I finally got to it at the end, and I was like, wow, they're really about to go down. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, that's when I don't think anybody saw it coming. Just with how bad Virginia's really been throughout this season. Mm-hmm. And just how good North Carolina ha- just seemed to be getting better every week. Mm-hmm. They really hadn't had a bad a bad game. <laughs> you know, the, the defense was looking good. The offense was rolling. I mean, they're, they're, I don't think anybody saw this. There was really no sign of this happening. I mean, there was no warning sign at all. <laughs> That's just sometimes the beauty of college football. Stuff yeah, happens. Yeah, well. It wasn't like last year the Tar Heels defense was just teetering at any moment, and you're like, well, anybody right. can come in and put 50 on them. So. Yeah, no, there was no signs of this happening at all. <laughs> that was crazy because, you know, last week we were said, is this, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, there's a time to take North Carolina serious or not. And we're kind of like, well. <laughs> yeah. And they, they definitely laid it dead there. And, you know, I would have to think, like, at this point, you know, for, I don't see Florida State, based on what we've seen, and the, it's been a crazy year, but based upon what we've seen to this point, there's no reason to think that Florida State at least doesn't run the table in the ACC. <laughs> yeah, they got themselves a, a win and a, a test of their own last night. Uh, they did. 38-20 over Duke um, in Tallahassee. Uh, a big fourth quarter, 21 points fourth quarter. They came in yeah. down. Three and then just uh, did what you know you do see good championship teams do, which is just that close down. a game, yeah, and yeah. close a game dominantly. Um, yeah, and, I mean Duke gave a valiant effort there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, dom- dominant first half for the most part. You know, they were led for the most part in the first half there, but you know, for the state with. Keep do enough to keep it close, and you know you just kind of had a feeling after they got to what twenty seventeen at the half. I think Florida State was up. I mean, excuse me, Duke was up. It's mm-hmm. kind of like well, you kind of almost felt like Florida State's gonna hit that comeback. <laughs> um, I mean, it was really big after Duke at the beginning of the second quarter. Duke took a ten point lead on the yeah. uh, pick six, 17, and then the ins- 
Yeah, and then the ensuing kickoff, uh, Florida State takes it back uh, for a touchdown, just stole back that momentum. Right. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, like you said, Florida State uh, very well could uh, run the table, at least in the ACC right now. Yeah. Um, it's looking like Look, we thought. Look at it. <laughs> but the craziness, yeah. you'll, you'll, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, and it's you know we did say you know the uh, the ACC is a dangerous league this year. Um, and, you know I don't think that makes you know like I don't think that makes North Carolina a less dangerous team. That was just a surprise no. upset. Um, you know it hurts their chances, but uh, yeah, definitely their national title chances because this was what their schedule was. They kind of had to run the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In order to to get consideration, um, even if they beat Florida State in the ACC title game, I think if anything that would probably knock the ACC out of it rather than uh, <laughs> rather than give Carolina an opportunity. I mean, you yeah, not to run the table there. So. Um, well, yeah, we'll see. Um, elsewhere, uh, Oregon bounced back from their loss. To Washington, they beat Washington State. They handled their business. Um, mm-hmm. um, Washington, Oklahoma, Texas, Ole Miss, all close oh, winners. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, Washington looked pretty <laughs> – first time today looked like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know, there was some concern just because it's, uh, you know, a, le- a big letdown opportunity um, coming out that huge win against Oregon. But you thought maybe, you know, at home, you know, uh, Arizona State, well, obviously not a good team, but they've ha- they've held their own at times against teams. You know, we saw them um, surprisingly took USC to the to the limit uh, a couple weeks ago, and mm-hmm. other games they really you wonder how you know how they're doing it because they're not obviously not the most talented team right now. Uh, but man, without that pick six, <laughs> the Huskies mm-hmm. were in trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but it's good that you can play that ugly game and escape with a win. The win. That's, yeah, um, all championship teams have that, you know. Weird um, game, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then you know I mentioned Oklahoma. They, uh, you well, know, who, UCF man. almost spoiled their year. Um, yeah. You know, I had them in the picks column, and, you know, I was shocked because I thought, you know, UCF would be overmatched, and Oklahoma had the bye week to settle down from the big Texas win and prepare. Um, And they looked kind of off, almost as if that Texas game would have been last week, more so. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the old Gus tried to... Try to do what he's been known for, and why he also the most frustrating dude in Auburn history, just because he gets up for these big games and then mm-hmm. plays down against the weirdest teams. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the Gus Bus giveth and taketh, and yeah. they gave. I mean, they gave a heck of a heck of a game there. I mean, they never they never stepped away. Uh, mm-hmm. You know. Oh, you just kind of found a, found a way at the end there, but you can't say that UCF boy they they took it to OU and, and Norman too. It wasn't yeah. like it was in Orlando or anything. <laughs> no, they didn't back down. Um, Did not. Get, get, give them all that credit. Um, mm-hmm. And then Texas uh, almost or did blow up actually a twenty-one nothing lead against Houston. Yeah, and needed to win late. Um, okay. Yeah, the Cougars, that, I, they really got hyped up for that. Oh, yeah. You know, old school rivalry. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the kids playing wouldn't yeah. remember when it was a rivalry, but the kids playing would, you know, they're finally in the big boy conference and this is the team, you know. Right. Um, in your state specifically, and uh, they're leaving yeah. too, so you want to get that shot in, and they well, almost had it. Shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, they definitely did. And uh, I guess the interesting thing is just the injury to Ewers, like what, mm-hmm. what that does for the rest of the season. You know, how how serious was it? I know they were going to have some something today. I didn't really follow anything today, so I don't 
Obviously, it wasn't too crazy because I'm sure that would have been breaking news if it was super bad. <laughs> uh, says he's going to miss time here. So, yeah. Oh, we'll, um, yeah. we'll see you hate who to, takes you hate over. To... Um, yeah. I, I don't. The good, the good thing for them is the schedule, mm-hmm. I would say. I mean, they would. You know, I know they had their TCU game coming up, and TCU's terrible. <laughs> After yesterday, they're terrible. <laughs> like uh, they get you know, their uh, they get their tough games at home. You know, if you you know they get yeah. BYU at home, they get Kansas State at home, probably their toughest remaining game. Then they go at yeah. TCU at Iowa State, who's also in a down year. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I say that they're actually three and one in the conference, so they have the same record as Texas. Uh, Mm, who knows? Maybe Ohio State's getting dangerous at the right time for them. Yeah. Um, who knows? You know, Iowa State's one of those teams that's pulled off the well against at least against OU, and they pulled off some stunners over the years. <laughs> mm-hmm. so we'll see. We shall see. But yeah, not the going into November, not the time to 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 lose your you know, last week of October going into November. To, not the ideal time to leave lose your quarterback at all, even if it's for a game or two. Still and throw off the rhythm or you know, ain't no telling with some of these injuries, how these players will bounce back from them too. So we'll see. Yeah. And then uh, another interesting <laughs> result yesterday, I thought uh, Miami beats Clemson. Um, yeah. Without, Dabo. without – Go ahead. I was just saying without their quarterback, you know, I thought – can they can they beat Clemson without uh, their quarterback? And you know he didn't play at all yesterday. And you know they can't. They were right there the whole game. I'm not shocked that you know it was somewhat close just because Clemson is a different Clemson now. But man, that, that, that's a that's a that's a that's a bad loss if you're Clemson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a bad, bad loss, you know. Nor, uh, uh, Miami team coming off of two straight ugly losses. Um, you know, losing, losing Georgia Tech, getting dominated by Carolina. Kind of thing, man. You know, Miami's known for falling off after a tough loss. Um, after being hyped, getting a little hype. And, you know, for that to happen. Now you start wondering, you know, it's. You know, are things really going to start falling apart for Dabo at uh, Clemson? <laughs> I'm going to say his post-game interview was weird, um, even by Dabo standards. He seemed <laughs> uh, not in a good place. Uh, <laughs> at all. No. Yeah. Um, Did not. And they, work. like you said, yeah, that was a – just a bad that was a bad loss for a team that's supposed to be, you know, the upper echelon of the sport. Right. Um Yeah, they're kinda and the thing is though that Dabo, you know, not really buying into the transfer portal. Um, you know, we've heard of all his rantings about NIL. And he's kinda not really being the guy that you want as your coach right now because, you know, even even if you're not not a fan of it, which I'm sure most coaches deep down really aren't, mm-hmm. you at least have to adjust accordingly because that's just what, what it is right now, whether you agree with it or not. To be successful, you're going to have to embrace the portal. You have to embrace NIL and do what you can in it, not fight it because that's not, that's not, it's not going anywhere. It's mm-hmm. not going to help you with that old school mentality and, the, you know, that all shucks, dabbo style that people – seem to enjoy a little bit <laughs> that's not going to do anything anymore <laughs> like <laughs> that's not going to save you <laughs> without winning games that gets really annoying quick so yeah i don't know <laughs> we'll see and you know that they're they're done in the acc this year so uh, no I acc were, title yeah um, well i guess they won last year though you yeah. know wasn't prettiest uh season last year but yeah no. But yeah, once again, they're out of the national title conversation, and I mean they were out before November. Yeah, <laughs> and, and 
you know, mid early October, that's not that's not where you want to be at. Yeah. If you're a contender. Um and it doesn't get easier for them. I mean, they still get Notre Dame, North Carolina, mm-hmm. they're both yeah. in Clemson, but you know eh. Who uh, knows? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> where that Got to go on the road to South Carolina and rivalry game. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows with that either? Um, And the the thing is, is that offense is still not. Starting to think BJU was not the problem at Clemson. (laughs) No. Even with the new OC and everything, there's obviously a disconnect. Uh Um, And a well respected offense coordinator in Garrett Riley and someone who. They thought really it was like, okay that we're gonna he's gonna take this offense back to a high level and right just no um, so yeah. yeah there's some uh-huh. more problems there yeah um, a lot of problems yeah anything else from yesterday you want to touch on uh, I would want to say the only other thing from yesterday and just kind of a shocker just how bad Arkansas looked yesterday. Mm. That might have been mm-hmm. Sam Pittman's game that he's out because <laughs> the only seven at homecoming against a bad Mississippi State team, that's not a good look at all, and they looked horrible. <laughs> yeah, um, crowd was not happy, the home crowd. And, no. Um, uh, no. They did, uh, I think Pittman probably got a stay of execution for a little bit. They fired Dan Enos, offense coordinator today. Right. So that may get him a year. <laughs> yeah, it may get him to the end of this year at least. Um, I, I don't know. He might get the start next season and get let go like Les Miles did kind of in season. Yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, that, yeah, uh, that's surprising term for a team that uh, a lot of people had high hopes for this year. Um, yeah, I and mean, they've had a lot of injuries, mm-hmm. but yesterday was just so bad. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is and the other thing, too, of course, is him being the offensive line guy and that offensive line to be so bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's weird. Because it seemed, you know, he seemed, was it two years ago, they really seemed to be on a different, seemed to be coming up. And then last year, kind of lackluster, but they thought, you know, that maybe the injuries last year and then this year is way worse than last year <laughs> with the mm-hmm. same. You know, Rocket Sanders, that hurt again, but, you know, KJ doesn't seem to be the same KJ this year no. um, in a lot of situations. And couldn't throw for anything yesterday. And honestly, if you can't throw against Mississippi State this year, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, moving on to uh, next week. A um, little bit, not a huge week, but uh, yeah. we mentioned Bama's off. Um, the big game next week, I guess, is Oregon Utah. Yeah, I mean um, that's where game day is going. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two uh, one loss teams there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another, another team, another game where losers probably out of the Pac-12 and uh, of course the national title picture. So huge implications for the winner. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, the cocktail party. We got the cocktail party next week. Uh, Georgia, Florida. Um, Georgia should, on talent, easily win it. Uh, even without Brock Bowers, although that is a huge loss of their offense because they really haven't found another. Uh, they go-to have a lot guy. of guy. Right. I mean, they have a lot of talent, but yeah, mm-hmm. when times of uh, oh shoot comes up, uh, Brock Bowers has been as his go-to guy. Um, you'd have to think that they'd be okay against Florida, but you know it's a rivalry game there. Um, and you know, Fort Florida should, um, coming off a of bye week should should be ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're gonna come. They're yeah, gonna be ready know, to they'll go. be they'll be hyped up. Uh, you know, oh, we yeah. saw their win over Tennessee earlier this year, so they can get right. up for a big rivalry game. Yeah. Um, speaking of Tennessee, they visit Kentucky next week. Um, mm-hmm. we'll see how they bounce back, uh, from this loss. And, um, and Kentucky but, too. <laughs> yeah. And Kentucky too. Um, 
Uh, Duke and Louisville, uh, ACC game, the winners, you know, trying to stay in that ACC title game hunt. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Ohio State goes to Wisconsin, not as big as it could be, but still, uh, it'd be like Luke Fickle to take that Wisconsin team and pull a big upset. uh, Yeah. It's in Madison. Yeah. It's a former team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be. That would be huge, but yeah, I, I don't see it. <laughs> no, don't uh-huh. see it. Uh, maybe a, maybe a couple of years down the road, that might be a, a huge game. But yeah, this year, Ohio State seems to be getting it together as the season progresses. I mean, that defense is looking good, and then the, that offense seems to be going at the right time. And, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., and he was definitely on uh, yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Wisconsin has the guy to keep up with him. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and other than that, I don't really see any, you know, there's no other ranked matchups or even mm-hmm. top 25 teams that should be worried and trouble. I mean, Oregon State mm-hmm. has a late night visit to Arizona. So, never That's know in Tucson. Yeah. But, um. I mean, yeah, I mean, Arizona is an improving team. Um, mm-hmm. Seem to be in a in a, in a up up pattern there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that one will go. It could could be an interesting Pac-12 after is it a night game. I haven't looked yeah. at the time. It is, yeah. That's a, a. I would assume probably a night game, so that could be you know. If anything, it could be an interesting Pac-12 after dark. <laughs> it might, you know, give them a game there. So. Yeah, it is a it's a nine thirty game. Um, so okay, so that could be interesting. Yeah, and uh, other than that, uh, Colorado visits UCLA a few hours earlier. Um, oh. UCLA big win over what, Stanford yesterday. Yeah. Um, they they do they closed out the deal against Stanford, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kept the big lead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see if Colorado can bounce back from their very, very bad loss. Um, yeah. And they need it for you know their bowl eligibility going forward. UCLA trying yeah. to stay in that. And the hunt. Uh, yeah, in the hunt for the Pac-12 title game. Um, yeah. Colorado they- definitely. Uh, I would oh, go ahead. No, I was saying I think I, I would think UCLA should be good there. Um, mm-hmm. You know they seem to be finding their finding their rhythm there. Um, so that'd be interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I just didn't see anything else that really jumped out to me. It's like, oh, that. Could get interesting. I mean, Washington goes to Stanford. That they should bounce back against that Stanford team. Um, Air Force still unbeaten. Uh, you know, they beat Navy yesterday. Uh, they go to Colorado State, so that's just something to watch. Air Force as they try to make a right. New Year Six um, Bowl. Um, yeah. That'd be interesting to see that happen. Just because, I mean, they've had. They've had some decent teams of late, but yeah, I mean that'd be a different, definitely a different type of team in a New Year Six Bowl, uh, you know. And uh, you know, might be good for the uh, just for the crowd, because of course, uh, you know, Air Force folks are everywhere, so I mean, mm-hmm. they're definitely proud. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah. So like I said, a little more a tamer week next week, but um. It's usually when the crazy stuff happens. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Um, NFL action today. Of course, the big one was we're recording this late Sunday night. So the big one was the Sunday night game. Uh, the Eagles and Dolphins, you know, Jalen Hurts versus two and the Eagles take it. Um, they had a good bounce back. Uh, mm-hmm. Good bounce back game after that uh, ugly loss to the Jets. <laughs> Um, able to bounce back, get the win, and you know, not really the shootout that we thought. You know, the Eagles mm-hmm. defense did a pretty good job containing that uh, 
contain that high power Dolphins offense for the mm-hmm. most part. Um, only gave up seven points in the second half. Um, and for the Dolphins, I guess the biggest thing, it's another big game where they don't necessarily look great. Mm-hmm. You know, they seem to beat up on guys that are less than great, but against the bit better teams, you know, we've seen them lose to Buffalo by double digits. Uh, we've mm-hmm. seen them lose now to uh, the Eagles by double digits. So, so I guess the, the next step for the Dolphins is can you trust them against a great team? And so far, last year and this year, not so much. <laughs> yeah, they need to step up and uh, yeah. win that big game. Um, and they also heard sure. Chiefs, they kept rolling over San, or San Diego, Los Angeles, the Chargers. Yeah. They um, always do that to go to me too, but mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and usually that game is a much closer game. Usually, Kansas City comes out and wins, mm-hmm. but usually a last second thing, and they really did, you know, that's um, in a six day period, two tough losses for the Chargers was in the Cowboys last on Monday, and then uh, Chiefs today, so and it, two wins on the season now for the. Chargers, but a lot of people thought it might be a, a dangerous team. Um, you know, made yeah. the playoffs last year and should have at least made the division round. <laughs> um, and this year, yeah, not, not, and maybe it's a Kellen, Kellen Moore is the, the, <laughs> the prop, <laughs> or at least the, the jinx that uh, I couldn't wait to get rid of in Dallas. And, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think it's, even higher, it goes higher than him, I think. Stay, yeah, it definitely probably. Does. He's toast, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, elsewhere, a Mac in the Patriots get a big win over Buffalo. Yeah, um, uh, Mac taking him back, a lead in the last seconds. Uh, but to Mike Gasecki, right? Yeah, um, yeah, he had a, I mean, you know, we've said, you know, Mac really hadn't necessarily been the problem a lot. Um, mm-hmm. he's had some ugly games. But man, he had a heck of a game today. Mm-hmm. But great. You know, that line was phenomenal. Um, you know, didn't back down. Really outplayed Josh for for, for the game. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, you know, led the last second. You know, after they uh, uh, went up late, I was like, well, you know, this is good effort. But it, you know, you thought the Bills were gonna hold on that last drive, or, or at least, uh, you know, the but. Uh, if there's anything, they're going to get up the field goal and probably win in overtime. But, man, Matt said, not today, guys. Good, You know, good for him because, you know, mm-hmm. he's kind of been the guy, the scapegoat of the thing. Well, Mac is horrible, and no one's really looking at all the other problems. But <laughs> so good good for Matt get, going in there, getting a big win against a, against a big rival and, uh, you know, out playing the top five quarterback. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, speaking of big quarterbacks, big days, Lamar Jackson, uh, huge day uh, as the Ravens offense, by far the best they've looked all year, finally looked like, well, I think what a lot of Ravens fans really hope uh, this new offense would look. But over 350 yards passing, three touchdowns, another one on the ground. The, the offense mm-hmm. ran well. The receivers were making plays and stepping up. Lamar spread the ball around. Um they did have another fumble, just concerning trend for that yeah. uh, offense. But big win over the Lions, who a good team, and they the defense really maybe the bigger, even bigger story for the Ravens. They shut down that Detroit offense completely. Mm-hmm. And the other thing too is they didn't. You know, the biggest thing for your Ravens has been you know letting folks back in the game. Just shouldn't let folks back into and mm-hmm. when never an issue on Sunday, they sl- continues. Slam the door on the Lions anytime the Lions look like maybe they're kind of nope not today. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be a big thing for you. yeah. And then, uh, honestly, uh, Lions team that's gonna make the playoffs. I mean, so it's a, a big big win and a dominant win. So mm-hmm. want to see that. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe a Lions team that probably will or should win their division at that too. Yeah. Um. Unless they're a complete implosion, you would have to think they're good in the 
good in the north. Yeah, and uh, another good win. That's you know, it was a, kind of a tougher opening schedule for them. Three division road games, and uh, you know, the Titans team that historically has given them fits. Um, mm-hmm. Now this Lions game, so another good win. They get Cardinals in Arizona next week, so hopefully they break. And like I said, if you're Ravens fan, you hope to. See that continue, and they pile up wins in the middle of the season because you know that closing schedule is vicious. Their last yeah. four games at Jacksonville, at San Francisco, and the Dolphins and Steelers. Um, mm. Yeah, in that division, yeah. you gotta <laughs> win our yeah. games. Um, and of course, uh, but yeah, uh, everything else. I think there were what Forty ers Vikings tomorrow night. We'll see about the Niners injuries. Who plays what? Yeah. Um. And then we had a bunch of teams on buys this week. Six yeah. buys. It's weird how the NFL staggers their buys. Um, yeah. Yeah, but. but uh, uh, overall, uh, especially the early games were very a lot of entertaining ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, the Colts Browns game was phenomenal. Um, you know, Falcons Buccaneers was ugly, but it was an interesting one. Just how close it was. Um, mm-hmm. Falcons with the walk off field goal. Um, but it's a you know entertain entertaining day. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of interesting games, and not necessarily the sec- you know sexiest matchups in the twelve o'clock hour, but a lot of good <laughs> games to keep you watching for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the moving. Steelers got a oh, go ahead. Decent. I was saying the Steelers got a decent win against the Rams there. Mm-hmm. You know, down and going into the fourth quarter there, and despite them, you know, us not thinking that they're a great team, they're sitting at four and two. So I mean, they're <laughs> they're, they're doing their thing, I guess. Yeah, and they um, it was a, a much better game from their offense too. You know, they mm-hmm. stole that win against the Ravens, played horribly all game until the last drive. Um, and they're a team that not only in games but in the season, you can't let them like linger around. No, you know Mike Tomlin, especially you know never had a losing season, and anytime you think, yeah. oh, this might be the year, they string together, you know, string yeah. the wins somewhere, um, mm-hmm. and they just somehow. Always keep hanging around. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that North is going to be <laughs> what the North always is. <laughs> Craziness. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Cleveland had a, a come, comeback win, late win yesterday over the Colts. Yeah. yeah uh, Bengals right. were off this week, but they looked, mm-hmm. you know, better the past couple of weeks at least. Um, yeah, they're starting to look better. So, yeah, that North. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a battle in November and December for sure. <laughs> Always, yeah. Um and speaking of battles, uh the ALCS will go to game seven. Uh Thanks. Rangers Man. big ninth inning uh tonight to put away the Astros in game six. Yeah. Uh and then the other one, the Diamondbacks fighting for their lives now. They uh had Two come good wins to come back from the early O two deficit, and then Bryce Harper in the fields won Game Five, and they'll have a chance to clinch a second straight World Series chip Game Six uh, tomorrow or Monday, as you listen to this. Yeah, so but you know that was still uh, in that uh, All Texas ALCS. Um, the La Road team has not. <laughs> Has not uh, won won a game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I would, you know, honestly, after the Altuve's craziness on uh, Friday, I thought, well, that you know, I wasn't sure how Texas was going to come out. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a that's a devastating loss and a. Game where you really thought, man, they're gonna go to Houston with two chances to get a one win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, good, good for Texas. You know, able to yeah, string quite a few runs there late and turn a pretty, 
For a lot of the game, a close game until uh, if you just look at the box, you're like, wow, <laughs> nine to two. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I don't think that uh, might do it for what I have on my notes this week. Maybe a little shorter episode. Uh, let's Greg, anything else in the world of sports you want to hit on? Well, I'm getting close to that NBA, uh, and uh, you know Harden's not going to practice now. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> another turn. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that plays out because he kind of thought that he would at least show up because he likes his teammates. But yeah, uh-huh. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Other than that, you know, pretty. I think we covered everything that I can think of. Yeah, like I said, a uh, slower week. Um, nothing too earth shattering. Um, it's just a good groove of the sports schedule. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So when does NBA games kick off Tuesday? Right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah uh, any uh, off the top of your head predictions for this season? Anything you expect out of your? Mavericks. Just make the playoffs, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, this the way things ended last year, man. Uh, you know that we'll get a full full season of uh, Luke and Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's just make the playoffs look look decent. I, that's all I can ask for. And I don't think we're necessarily contender at all, but it's no reason to not make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, to a degree, I guess as a Pels fan, just stay healthy and <laughs> no, yeah. can, let me finally yeah, see what this lineup looks like over the course of a full season. Um, right. Yeah, because you guys can't stay healthy to save your lives. <laughs> yeah, not just Zion. I mean, everyone. You need Brandon Ingram. Yeah, every- you know, see Jim McCollum. Like you know, Trey. Still not happening. Trey Murphy is going to miss significant time now. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it just. So it goes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Greg, what's been done up real good for you this week? Done up for me real good this week. Uh, um, yesterday, not only, did, of course, the Tennessee win, but uh, you know, it was my 15th wedding anniversary. So, yeah. Congratulations on so, that. Long, long, long run there. Uh, so, you know, excited with the – still with – you know, hopefully another 40, 50 years, but mm-hmm. depending on how long we live now. <laughs> but, uh, of yeah. course, uh, <laughs> I'm just happy to, you know, still, still keep it going because, you know, a lot of a lot of marriages don't last a X amount of time these days, it seems. So, that's how, mm-hmm. you know, it's just good to make it, make it through a lot. But, uh, you know, a lot of good times, too. So, you know, we're, you know, happy to still be going. How about you? Uh... I'm just going to say cigars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful indeed. Roll Tide. Uh, sure. Start the uh, start the account again. Start the since UT beat Bama. Start the, I, start the count again. Norm- back to Yeah, normal. right. Back to how it should be. Uh, we thank you once again for listening to Taking On Sports uh, here on the Alabama Take Family of Podcasts. Of course, check us out wherever you get your podcasts. Check out all the other wonderful podcasts on our network. Go to the alabamatake.com for writings and such. And uh, I don't even like our Taking Bets column every Friday, me, Blaine, and Mallory. Um, I don't think I did too well this week, huh. but um, we never do guarantee that you should follow our advice. Uh, but <laughs> once again, thank you very much. Subscribe, give us good ratings, tell people you think would also enjoy to listen to us and keep it done up real good yourselves out there. Greg, have a good one, man. You too, buddy.